Hey everybody, it's Rick O'Shea playing MPQ Marvel Puzzle Quest. Thanks for jumping on the video again. It's going to be a big couple of days here. Starting tomorrow is the X-Men vs. Apocalypse Alliance based event. So make sure you have your people ready and um, can try to get as far as you can through the progress. There's really good rewards in the uh, uh, boss events, people like to call them. And just to take a quick look here, what's... Uh, I guess we'll let it load. <laughs> there we go. Take a quick look at the rewards as you go along through the personal progression is fine. Loot Cage leading into a black cat green cover and then the legendary token awarded at the end for personal progression is a legendary token from the higher learning store and that is going to include the brand new five star professor x as a potential um uh, potential cover to earn there or uh to win at the odds at one in seven draws so good luck for that and also included is uh the five star hulk bruce banner and dr strange so a couple of good rewards there the alliance rewards are also great check it out after three kamala con in a row you can earn three covers potentially for saber tooth i think a lot of people are going to uh, really enjoy those covers if your alliance can get past round uh, four five or six to get to round seven for that last saber tooth cover that'll be great and of course if you can complete round eight there's another legendary token for that so that's starting tomorrow i'll do a video on that uh, tomorrow at some point and I'm really excited because it will also be um, our opportunity to pull for Professor X in the higher learning store so let's get into the action we are going to take on the Crash of the Titans today against Black Panther with one of my favorite um, characters in a uh, thong or whatever you want to make fun of his uh, outfit Craven. so we'll take that on in a second let's first jump into i think we wanted to get into this behemoth burrito here yeah it's just an iron heart this should be a quick and easy win i think let's start the action that way i haven't covered her for quite a while and this might be a nice way to recap her abilities really really good blue ability that leads into her awesome red ability so let's just start playing and then we'll cover it when we get to her Her specials are ready to play. So I like to prioritize blue, even though her red is her best. Uh, blue really builds up red for you quickly, especially if you time it out to play it right. So we'll see if we can do that. What that means is, with her blue ability, she moves tiles out of the center and then changes the new centroid tiles, the four tiles in the middle, changes those to red charge tiles. So they're not just red, they are charged, and that allows you to get tons of AP for red right in one shot. Um, let's see, have our green ready to play. I usually run this at level three because the other abilities are so good, but the damage is able to do over 4,000 damage and send an enemy airborne for a few turns. Um, it would take out Devil Dino, so let's just play this on Iron Man. Turn on our animations here quick, quickly. Cool, so he takes the damage and then goes airborne for a few turns. Wanted to try to leave red toward the middle. We need one more blue AP, or of course a match four that gains us a blue would be nice, or a natural match of blue. I can change, change things up a bit. Nope, not too bad. Sometimes they get crazy extra moves when that version of Captain Marvel plays her ability. Oh, here we go. Yellow drops blue. Didn't really see this working. There it is. All right. I think we're ready to play. We've got our red and blue ready to go. Let's move over to Carol. 
we're going to start out with magnetic repulsors. It uh, it does the tile um, change to red charge tiles, but it also has a damage component of 3250. I kind of hope this doesn't take her out. And let's see, is it a good time to play it? Actually, we should wait because the four red charge tiles will be in the center, but there's this red tile here isn't quite good enough to make an automatic match. Let's try this. All right, now's a better time because this red tile that's sitting there will make an automatic match with the tiles we're about to place in. Let's go. You see what I mean here if you watch closely? They move out, matches, and then the charge tiles. Automatic match of those charge tiles is great because then you can play your ability again right away. And with remote control gauntlets, it's basically targeting the, uh, it basically hits the non-target enemies, which are the two in the back. The front target isn't affected by remote control gauntlets unless they're the only character remaining. So check out the damage in remote control gauntlets. It will deal at this level 8,400 damage to the non-target enemies, but if there's one remaining, 16,800. Crazy. Uh, cool animation. Here we go. Takes out the other two. And we'll quickly take Carol out with just the match damage. Oh, we can play it again. Remote control gauntlets on a single target enemy. A little bit of overkill on that 117, but worth it for the fun. Great. Yep, haven't played Ironheart in too long. Quick overview. And then let's go into the crash. So Craven is against Black Panther, and he, Panther can be pretty tough. Except there's some strategy here that I was telling my alliance mates on on uh, potentially uh, ways to gain an advantage here. So Panther has a really, really good yellow ability. Protector of Wakanda is great. It creates a it immediately creates a repeater tile that generates very strong fortified special tiles for his team. We're going to let him get yellow and play it because Craven is well suited to fight against that. Then uh, Black Panther's blue ability, Kinetic Shield, creates fortified protectiles. That's pretty tough. I don't really want him to play that, but it's a, a second priority. Um, definitely don't want him to get any red. We'll try to uh, keep red away from him and deny that. It basically deals just big time damage depending on um, big time damage, but then it also increases any fortified friendly tiles he has. So why would we want to let Panther get yellow? Well, it's all about Craven's passive ability. His purple, think like the enemy, is really, really good in certain situations. If the enemy creates a lot of special tiles, he will reduce the value of those tiles and then do a big hit of damage at the beginning of every turn. In this case, it's well over a thousand points of damage automatically while reducing the strength of those specials. It's really pretty good. Let's look at uh, Most Dangerous Game. It uh, costs 10. I think it should cost 9 if I was to design this ability. But he places a trap tile on the board, and then at the beginning of, the, of every turn, he just steals one random AP from the enemy. It never misses. It always hits some color that they have. Pretty cool. And then if the trap tile is matched by our team or the enemy, it does damage and then adds tiles of the teams, our team's strongest color to the board, which happens to be black because Craven's black is his strongest color, and Wounded Pride, again, this, this ability really can hit pretty hard if you plan it right, but here's the key. It creates a countdown tile. Uh, at this level, it's only a one-turn countdown, but you need to play it when you have three AP in your strongest color, and the enemy has three in their strongest color. It deals damage based on those um, AP colors. So in a one-on-one -on -one case, our strongest color is black, so that's kind of kind of stinks. It costs 10 to play it in the first place, and then you're hoping to have three uh, black available to do the damage afterward. We might be able to get away with doing, um, you know, a little less damage than that and still getting the win here. So I want him to get yellow because if he plays, he plays his yellow soon, that's the that's earlier 
uh, Craven is going to start doing damage every turn. There we go. He's got his yellow qualified. He's going to play his repeater here. Hopefully not in an easily matchable location. Perfect. Usually I would be rooting way against uh, an enemy repeater in a terrible location like that. But in this case, we're going to see how this works out really well, I believe. I want that blue, but it creates a match four in purple. I'm going to go for it. Purple's not a strong color for him. And let's just... I need to do a better job of keeping red away from him. I have slacked on that a little. There is, there's his first three special tiles. Nothing happens yet until Craven sees four enemy specials on the board. Okay. That's an unexpected extra move. Great, I'll take that. Now we can play most dangerous game. Creates a trap tile, and I think it places it on blue, or is it random? Let's see. Yeah, it's always on blue. I don't know that it specifically says that. You can read back through and let me know. Let's get our black going. I'm trying to get to 13. Here we go. Protector of Wakanda has created more special tiles. Now check this out. 1,500 damage. And the special tiles have been greatly reduced. His, he's got two points worth of attack tile damage. Four points worth of uh, protect tile damage. That is basically zero. That's why Craven's great. It automatically turned his specials into essentially nothing. And we've got 11 black, and he has 4 yellow. Wounded Pride would deal a bunch of damage, 2151 for each point. That's going to be, you know, only 4 points, 4 times that damage, 8,000 total damage. That's fine. Um, you know what, let's play it now. Because of those special tiles, we're going to take him out every turn. Uh, take his uh, health down every turn. I think we're going to get good use out of that in a single turn from now. Let's keep his protect tile on the board by matching purple that direction. Whoops. Oh, are you serious? He found a way to match away my countdown. <laughs> I made a mistake. Alright, Panther. Just for that cunning scheme, I'm going to take you out with, with uh, my damage every turn. Panther does deal additional damage if he happens to match a fortified or any protectile. And if it's fortified, he gets, uh, you know, basically the benefit of keeping that special tile on the board. I blew it with Wounded Pride, but we're taking hardly any damage. Let's just let our passive win completely. Maybe we can get a match on our trap tile. That would be kind of cool. We're running out of time. We're doing tons of damage. I don't think we're going to get that matched. By Tooth and Claws, pretty good. Yep, 5,300. Wasn't able to avoid red well enough. Didn't try hard enough. One more turn should do it regardless. And here we go, Craven for the win. Think like the enemy takes him down. Cool. Good enough for legendary token to add to the stack. We're going to need it in a couple weeks still. When Professor X moves into latest legends, we'll use a lot of our tokens there. Come back and finish that last node later. Great, so let's move on to our tokens, and then we're going to get into a bunch of PvP action. I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video. I hope you guys are still with me. If you thought all we were going to do was a Craven battle, but we are going to take a lot of your character requests into the Shield Simulator. But we've got a bunch of tokens, including 27 heroics to finish out with. That's a lot. Got into a, a whole bunch of the lightning rounds over the last day and a half. Taco Vault, we're building back up. We have 246. Let me know, guys, in the comments down below if you want to see a solo video of just drawing a ton of these Taco tokens. I typically wait for the latest released three-star characters to be in the vault 
to do that. Uh, it doesn't really matter, they're just behind other characters and helps them catch up in my mind. But I wouldn't mind going after that 4-star Thanos included in this vault. And at uh, 246, that's a good shot at getting that him plus the latest legendary. So if you want to see that, I'll do it in a separate video. So that's all you have to watch. Let me know. Okay, Unstable ISO 8, three tokens with a shot at uh, Bucky Barnes, War Machine, and Jubilee. Got a three star, Angel, that's a good hit. And Doctor Strange, two three stars in a row. We'll do the hundred draw. And it's Captain Marvel. So I'm not a huge fan of how the token draw process in vaults happens now, having to wait for the tap now um, image to appear on the screen. It seems to take probably three times as long to pull tokens now. That'll take forever to run through that taco vault, by the way. All right, so Craven w uh, was great in the Crash of the Titans. Next up is Talos. So four and a half days to level up your Talos to see if you can win that Crash. I don't even know who he's going to be against. Is it going to be Four Star Carol? Is it going to be Nick Fury? Or is it going to be somebody that doesn't make sense? Let me know who you guys think it's going to be. I think it's going to be Fury. Let's see. I might be completely wrong. And what do you guys think about this purchase for the Professor X already? 500 command points to get one cover, his blue cover. I strongly suggest don't doing that. Don't do that just to be competitive in this first PVE that's required him. Requiring Professor X as the five-star essential in PVE before he's available in latest legendary tokens is pretty ridiculous. Hope D3, um, hope the developers are listening. That's pretty unfair. I don't think um, we should suffer in PVE compared to what we usually get by being able to use the five-star essential. Anyway, that's enough, and here is eight is enough. Three remaining tokens in the Doc Ock PVP. Hopefully we can get one gold. There's one. Spidey, that'll come in handy since he's the next PvP up. And we got a three-star blade. Very good. Army of One was the next PvP featuring Punisher. Another gold. Bullseye. Comes in handy. I just sold my max champ of three-star bullseye. And I'm got a duplicate getting up there, but not quite up all the way. Hey, thick as these, we have one last remaining token to try to get at the 1 in 250 odds of hitting a 5-star Professor X. I definitely, if devs, if you were listening before, please listen to this. Having a hero point store that contains an, a chance at a new 5-star is great. That is great. Don't take this away. I like this in being available before or after a command point store for a 5-star. That's fine. Do what you want. I like that, having better odds at the 40x and the 10x draw. That's cool. But please don't make this a, a continual policy of having the five stars required as an essential in PvE before they're available in the command point store. Please don't do that. But this store here, that's great. Let's take her one shot. Just a two star. Okay. Well, you know what? There's a day and a few hours remaining. Let's do a 200 purchase just in case. Now, just another two star. I'm not doing any 10 packs or 40 packs here. I decided not to. It's just not worth it. I mean, the chance is there. So my alliance mates have gotten Professor X on the on a 40x draw, but how many of them did they spend? It's that's expensive for me. I'm gonna pass. Okay, so I guess a quick look. We're up to 27 latest legendary tokens now. Rescue moves out. In a week and a half or two and a half weeks? I don't know exactly what the time is going to be now that the Hero Point store came out before uh, Professor X's Command Point store starting tomorrow. Typically, it's uh, they rotate into Latest Legends two weeks after their Command Point availability store closes on Sunday night. For me, the 5-star rotates in the Monday morning uh, two weeks later. So, we'll see. Elites. Man, we have 16 elites. That might mean four gold. There's one. Deadpool. Speed these tokens up. I know they take forever. Then I have to level up our characters. We'll have PvP action after this, guys, I promise. 
Now the improvements they made to normal token draws in these stores, not a vault, that's great. They really fly by. Another Colossus, is that his final cover I need? I think it might be to make another max champion. And another quick look, we're back up to 91 standard tokens. When I get to probably 300, maybe 400, we'll do another super draw. Um, you guys kind of liked it when I did 1,000. I'm not going to save up 1,000 ever again, though, by the way. All right, 27 heroic tokens, 1 in 16 odds at getting a 4-star. So let's, hmm, wait a minute. I, was, I guess we'll do them. I was thinking of waiting because in a couple of days... Juggernaut moves into token availability in the middle of the offseason. Yeah, we'll just go for it. Chances of getting him specifically are pretty low unless you have him set as a favorite or as a bonus hero. There's our gold, and it's Gambit. Nice hit. And my f another three-star in a row, Falcon. My four-star bonus hero is going to be set for a little while longer on a specific character, so I guess it's not too much of an issue to worry about Juggernaut yet. Electra. And Torch. Doing great on the three stars. Let's try to kick that up a notch with a four star. Man, asking you shall receive. There it is. We hit the four star. Thank you, viewer luck. Three, two, one. What a hit. Rocket and Groot, one of the most useful four star characters to have on your roster i suppose top 10 most uh, well it's number one most used character for sure by the stats that uh, the developers have put out before i believe another human torch and there it is we did get two four stars from this big lot of heroics three two one miles Cool. Nice hit to get a couple of those. Maybe, do we have a chance? There's a Black Panther. Do we have a chance to hit another four before we're done? Our gold is on a hot streak. For sure. Kamala is set as our three-star bonus hero after Quicksilver there. Another three. Spidey. We're going to get all two stars for these final eight. What do you bet? No! No! Viewer Luck says, no way. We need to get another four. Unbelievable. And go. Miles Morales again. I want to know the odds of getting him back to back. Pretty much one over 80 plus times one over 80 plus. Crazy. I'll take it. That's it. What a run on the heroics. Let's go and level up our rewards. We've got 294 to take care of. It's adding up to be a little out of control again. 60-some one-stars. I know the twos get to be boring, but I definitely want to top off my Magneto. And Black Widow is maxed again. Close on Wolverine. And this guy's just rebuilding, so that's where I wanted to fly through his rewards here. I sold him out and had a bunch on my rewards queue. Great. Is that it? I think that's it for the twos. Got a whole stack of two stars to run through after those thousand standard tokens a few days ago. I still have 141 two stars to take care of. <laughs> Some other time. Okay, let's go with the three stars. You know, I usually look at the threes to see how many. Let's see. 44 of them from where we started. That's great. Lots of Spidey. He was a, an event reward. Kamala. Bonus hero for a while. Can we level up Panther? Great. 224. Get more heroics. That's great. Looking for tokens like usual, but also want command points. We just crossed over 2,400 CP. And Colossus does get the Max Champ legendary token there. Awesome. I 
sold my max bullseye, so this is my highest level bullseye character. Getting close to top level again. Close enough. He's required for PvP again soon. Won't be that difficult to play with a lower level character. Carol takes a bunch of levels. Angel and Hot Guy move up. Got another black for Doc Ock, but I think we're going to get lucky on the rest of his colors coming up in the line here. Doom needs more purple and a little black on my rebuild. I do have a max champ of him that I do not plan to sell. There we go with Doc Ock. Let's see, where is he at? There's the green. Four, five, four. He made it to 13 covers. I just wanted to double check. I wasn't spending any saved covers to uh, increase other covers. That's not, not well advised on three star characters. You'll come across the covers you need eventually if you're patient. I, uh, you can uh, exchange five saved covers for a color you need, but definitely if you can wait it out, you'll get it uh, eventually. All right, so we can champ Doc Ock up. We'll probably wait on another time to do that. Let's hit our four stars that have been sitting a while. 14 four stars. Lucky on Miles today. Hero points and command points. Closing in on 19k health. Rocket and Groot, though, hit, hit level 344. Nice to get them as high as possible. Gwenpool's been all over the place lately on both sides of the game on uh, story mode and versus mode. 338, legendary in two more levels. Got Peggy from the daily resupply. That, that'll help with seven command points, and she gets a little bit stronger. 101 match damage on blue is pretty cool. 115 on yellow. Lots of War Machine, 24k health, great. Ghost Rider hits the 5-star Ghost Rider cover and makes it to 22k health. Nice. Played him recently, and we have a cover for Ghost, 296. Well, there we go. Not every day we have a cover to add in on a 5-star. This should be a pretty good reward. 250 hero points, and he's that much closer to 60k in health with the legendary as the next reward level. Great. Crossed over 18,000 hero points again, and something about that, I'm saving up hero points pretty much because the game's anniversary is coming up in sometime in September, right? Or is it early, or is it the first part of October? Anyway, um, around a month, there's a month and a half from now. The, uh, the MPQ anniversary will be coming up, and so it's nice to save up hero points because they often have some pretty awesome vaults. All right, let's get into the PvP side of things. We got a little bit of time. Let's see. All right, plenty of time remaining. Looks good. Character requests. Make sure and get in character requests. I've got a bunch that piled up because I haven't gotten them in in recent videos but here we go we'll get some in today and then anything um, anyone that you haven't seen recently or a four star or five star that uh, that uh, you've had questions on and haven't caught any of my old videos let me know in the comments below I'll get them into a, a match or two let's start out with yeah that's gonna be a tough fight that might be a good one to play I was also thinking of an idea about this um, how about once in a while we kind of just say I'm going to skip three times and then play whatever team it is and mirror two of the characters against that team that comes up and then choose a third that's either maybe a four star to try to overcome those odds. I think that might be kind of fun once in a while. Oh, and by the way, uh, we should be able to get the last cover I need on my banner tomorrow. We'll see. I'm going to try to make a video right away because um, that uh, Professor X store should open in the morning. So I might record it and upload it through the day, maybe during my lunch at work. So let's do this. Let's look for a team 
that we can match the team's strongest color on. I'm going to skip this off. That just is pretty tough for right now. Very little points. There's a pretty good team. So on this, on this team, the strongest color for match damage is either black or green. Let's check it out. I'm not going to use this team. I'm just skipping ahead to see. Okoye's match damage is 751 on black, and Thor's green is 727. So black is the strongest color. So knowing that, here's what I want to do. I'm going to pick a five star that's got black as their strongest color. And you know what, for now, let's just go with Okoye as well, because I want to get four star Captain Marvel in play from my team. This should be kind of funny. Um, I think we've got it set so we can really uh, win this match pretty quickly. So Carol's going to feature a black ability, and we'll either use her yellow or Okoye's yellow. We've got red, so those three colors are taken care of. We need um, purple, green, and blue to round out this team. And so who's a purple, green, and blue? I think the only real five-star that has that color set is... Black Suit Spidey, right? Am I missing anything with anybody else? It's kind of a unique color combo. Um, he's not going to really help this team out, so maybe I could forego a color and pick somebody else. No. Carol's already has green, so purple-blue might be worth it for us here. Um... I'm spending too long just searching around. Let's just put it on Doctor Strange instead. I think he might be a little bit better for this team. And let's go. Let's go ahead and boost black for Carol. And yellow, and just in case we need red. And we'll pick somebody that's a random team up. Let's get into it. So here's why I think this team might be kind of funny. With uh, black as both teams' strong color, Carol's going to do... AOE, team damage, every time the enemy team matches black. Well, great. And on top of that, when Okoye has team up, that is boosted for the damage on top of everything. It's, it's uh, really pretty nuts. Let's take on Jessica on their team first. And we have an extra move. Yulak starts us off so well, so often. That extra move led into another one with blue. Whenever there's a critical on the board and you have five stars on your team or against you, you really want to pretty much match that critical off so they don't hit you with it. It's big time damage. All right, so now that we have the big stuff out of the way, we want to set them up to match black against us if it's safe to do so. We have a couple of choices here. We want to watch out for Jessica's traps. She's already half dead. You know what? Let's move over. To Okoye now because if they match black it's going to be pretty big pretty quickly let's go for yellow blue combo and so hmm tricky of course there's a match four in red that's probably the best play but they got a little bit lucky that the trap tiles are lined up for a big couple of hits against us so what can we do to disrupt that? Is there anything? Not really outside of letting them get the red match. And I think I'm going to let them do it because I'm going to take this yellow, drop the blue down. Probably worked out because we got a team up match unexpectedly out of that. And now we might be able to get them set up for a black match. Just check this out. Uh, what should be our next move, though? There's match four in purple. It doesn't really get us there anywhere, so let's do this. We're going to play Okoye's. Yeah, that's probably a pretty good move. Yellow and blue. Uh, if I would have paid attention that they were going to do the same, I would have let them play theirs first, actually. So there's a black match at the top left corner. I think they might try to go for it. If they do, you won't believe this. Um, while we're at it, let's stun Thor since we happen to have our ability to play that. We'll take away their green. 
and back to Okoye. Take a white match. Please match black. They go for it. Watch this. 18,000 damage just because of what Okoye adds to that team damage from Carol is just so funny. We'll play Photonic Barrage now, and we also earn black when they match black. We earn it for free. Well, we'll pick a spot like that. We know that Okoye is going to be knocked out here no matter what we do. Pretty much. I'll just take green with Carol. Don't hit me with the trap. Dr. Strange damage is also boosted by Okoye. The enemy team has no chance. Thor's going to be in his god mode here, but I don't think it's going to matter much. Another shot, and it's over. Oh, man. That's a photonic barrage. Yep, well, two more turns for that to count down. Unless we get a hit on purple, it's over. That was a pretty fun team, actually. So that was kind of taking a huge advantage with Carol. Let's play four-star Captain Marvel. Um, that's another, look at that team. That team has black as their strongest color all the way around. I don't want to cheat that way again. Um, not really cheating, it's advantageous, of course. Black, strongest, again. Well, you know what? That's okay. Let's play this team with it. We'll use Carol again, but instead we'll play with a couple other four stars that we can use to our advantage to earn our strongest color AP when they match theirs. And Jessica is going to be a great use for that with red. So we've got red. Um, we'll probably use Carol's black just for fun. Yellow, passive blue. So a purple green would be good on this team. Let's go with um, Loki. And Loki's going to help Carol quite a bit with all of the countdowns that they that uh, is created on black. So here we go. Who do we want to take on first? Sometimes I'm I'm kind of torn between either Goblin or or Doc Ock. I think in this case we're going to go with yeah probably Goblin. If Black gets away, it's pretty damaging. And I want to leave black matches for them somewhat because it earns us red AP for free. But I got to do this match first. It's a triple move combo, black, yellow, and blue. Or more. So what should I do next? There's a lot of good stuff on the board. Probably don't want to let Doc Ock get his green going because it's going to be a lot of AP or a lot of health that they regain every turn. There they got a black. And now it's our team color strongest isn't black, but we earn red AP because of that. And we don't get the team damage. It's best to match it if you can. But hey, you know, Carol's so good, you don't have to match that every single time. Found an evidence tile. Unreal. Runs so good when you guys are on. Look at this. Extra move. The critical tile created by this extra move is going to sit right here and match that black. And then this is going to be so much damage. So because of that, crazy damage we're going to get. Let's go ahead and throw strike tiles on the board. We'll lose one or two because of the purple. Yeah, because of the purple that we're going to match away, but this just increases the damage so much more. Here we go. And a trap tile was there. Wow. This is a, a whole lot of run good, by the way, if you didn't know. <laughs> we can play Carol's Photonic Barrage. Let's play it in a spot where we probably won't lose it right away. A lot of times you want to play that higher on the board because if you have other countdowns on the board, then you want this to trigger a, a strike tile before the other countdowns resolve. I think we're fine in this case. So we have a, 
a red-black double move combo there or a blue-red. Let's leave them the potential black. Ah, they go for green just like I didn't want. No problem. Even that black, they might take it. There we go. More red AP for us. We're up to five again so quickly. And so our counter is at three. We already have a lot of strike tiles. We could let that count down naturally, or we could go ahead and... Um, Spend executive decision. It only costs five. We have 15 yellow. We might as well use it. Immediate damage when that resolves. And wow, look at that. All the way down from over 30k. Crazy. Yep, I thought it would be worth it just to spend that down, but it was even better than I thought. So, what to do here? Probably get. He's going to go for red, yellow, and black against us. There's a black move on the board. Let's let him take it. We'll just get purple. Luckily, ran into an extra move against us, though. they got to catch up a little bit. We've been so far ahead with our luck, that's for sure. All right, let's play Shadow Play from Loki. Puts countdown tiles on a lot of black tiles. Sounds good. And... Can we line up another black match? I don't see an immediate way to get that. What else could we do? Could we do anything tricky with the countdowns that are out there? Not so much. Let's just get this double move, purple and blue. Wow. Could we run any better on this match? It's unbelievable. Yep, let's just end it. We've have, we have so many things we could do. Well, let's see. Is there something funny? Um, could we... Once in a while, I drop a countdown tile that would make a match happen automatically. There's no guarantee here, but let's see if a yellow drops in at the top. Just for fun. Nope. Let's finish it with a dagger surprise. That would have done 20k or more damage anyway. Wow, that team just... Really? Oh, man, I just realized that's a friend from my alliance. <laughs> Egghead Clown, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to screen cap it so I can apologize directly to him. That is a guy in my own alliance probably going to get me booted for that. Friendly Fire is not good. I'm so sorry. I just played the team without looking. Um, I'll direct you to this video so you know this apology is sincere, and uh, I'll dump you some points by retreating if I find you out. Sorry about that, clown. We'll get you back. Okay, so that's a hopefully a pretty good show of Carol. Let's get into... We haven't played Bishop ourselves in a match for a while. Let's do that. He's down toward the bottom, but he's so useful. His week where he was boosted was just completely disastrous. <laughs> that went past him. There we go. So Bishop's features a blue and a yellow ability. I don't use his yellow much, but I thought about how we could make use of it. So there's a couple of five stars that make enemy special tiles, and um, Phoenix is one of them. And you know who, oh, you know what? They're going to use, let's do this. They're going to use Banner. We're going to try to use our own as well. And I say try because once he converts to the Hulk, his black ability, you can't even play it. Well, I'm going to try to get his black ability played. So he's going to be good for black and green, blue and yellow. So we need a red and purple player on the team. You know what? That actually works out perfect to bring Phoenix F after all. Let's go for it and see if we can win. And I'll try not to hit any of my buddies. Okay. Well, once again, viewer luck gets us an extra move right away at the beginning. We'll play that. 
no thought process there at all so now what do we do i want to try to get hmm the most out of that critical for sure there's a couple ways to do purple yeah i think we just have to do this it's a uh you can get a match four by dropping a match three below it so don't just go oh i gotta match that critical and taking any match that gets it look at this 8600 in damage from that uh, match four so okay if things are happening quickly we got to check this out bishop jumps in front to take damage whenever it would be over a certain amount to his teammates i guess we should look at this over really quickly overclocked whenever he takes whenever a teammate would take a certain amount of damage bishop jumps in front takes that damage and then it adds into his totals that keep track for when overclocked kicks in when he's taken enough damage as you see on the numbers here he will fire back with damage and hey he earns blue when that happens so it's really nice to build up his blue ability energy energy conversion costs 10 but again you know you build it up automatically from damage he takes and it stuns the opponent for four turns that's crazy it also destroys ap in the strongest colored in any ap pool by a bunch so super useful we have that blue i don't want to play it yet let's wait for the right time red purple overclocked again he jumped in front took a bunch of damage now i probably need to hurry up and play bishop's abilities before we lose him that's the one major drawback extra move of bishop is if the enemy team does enough even just match damage he jumps in front all the time so what do we do here let's go ahead and play psychic report we can do it twice and we'll get some good red matches on this play absolutely extra move and there's red matches there are red matches all over the place um let's do hmm. stinks about that critical tile not a good way to drop it in place too much yeah there's a good way to drop it that's for sure we're gonna take out Now well, let's leave him. Let's move over to Parker. There's a really good match here. We have a red move that's going to drop a green, a critical red, and a black match up above. Cool. I do a lot of damage. Okay, so he played. That's why I wanted to keep Banner on the other team in this match for a little bit. Don't die yet, Bishop. We have uses for you. All right, so here we go. The, um, the attack tiles created from Banner on the enemy team, we can play for the future from um, Bishop here. It costs 10, so it's a little expensive, but it, it changes enemy special tiles into protect tiles for our team. Well, just one. I have it cover level three. You might want to step that up, but I get so much out of Bishop's other abilities that I don't step that up to a higher level. All right, let's go ahead and play energy conversion on Parker there. Stun him for four turns. Psychic Flames to take Banner out, essentially, after one turn. Let's see, what do we want to do here? I think... Yeah, I really feel like we'd better take that green match and work on our own banner to transform into Hulk. We can do that now with enough green on hand. Maybe I should have moved, removed a bunch more red from the board before that happened. We're going to lose Bishop right here. So he does great for sure while he's in the match but he gets knocked out easily because he just takes all the big damage phoenix has 10 red that's trouble our transform to the hulk countdown is on yellow that's fine let's get hmm don't know what to do maybe we'll get 
a little bit more green. I'd rather Phoenix take the damage because if she does get knocked out, she can rise again as the Phoenix. So let's now go for, in one turn, we're going to transform to the Hulk. So now is when I like to play the smartest guy in the room for our team. Attack tiles against the enemy team and a couple against us. But since he's going to turn to Hulk, that's okay. I think that's just fine. And let's let him take... Um, let's, well, let's see. Now we'll let Gene take the damage once again on the next turn. And here we go. Transform to Hulk time. So at the beginning of the turn, every turn, he's going to be the one making matches. Unfortunately, he earns zero AP when he does that. We have a uh, nine cost AOE. At this level, he only does 40 some hundred worth of damage. Can't wait to get him champed up and that number is going to go way higher. Better take this red match. Phoenix also has a green AOE, but she has to be knocked out and brought back in the match to get it. Here goes Hulk, what's he gonna do? All right, I don't mind Hulk on my team when there are strike tiles, so he's just doing so much damage every turn. Phoenix is about knocked out. We can't knock her out before Parker. We could, but it's not recommended. Where are we at here? Okay, let's work Parker down and then we'll try to take out them both with an AOE hit or two from Hulk. There's a match for in blue, but let's do this blue that gets yellow and kind of disrupts the alignment of that blue. Nah, not as good as I thought. Our Phoenix could get knocked down in a couple turns. Should we let her get knocked down and bring her back? Probably not worth it here. We're going to win. Let's do it. Hulk, smash. Team damage takes out his buddy Parker, and it's all over. And by the way, Hulk took a lot of damage, or Hulk could have taken a bunch more damage there, and your health that you had on Banner when he transformed doesn't get touched. So when Hulk, if Hulk gets downed, if you can put him in front for a big hit, then um, immediately Banner comes back until you can transform again. Guys, we're going to have to end it there. Thanks a lot. Let's hear uh, of your recommendations for other four star and five star characters to get in action. I do have others already that we're going to get in, including Taskmaster, Ant-Man, um, and Vulture, and potentially others. So let me know down below in the comments what you wanna do. And by the way, guys, we have a lot of watchers and subscribers. It's about 50-50. If you have a chance, please hit the subscribe button. You'll see it come up on my um, main icon right now. Hit that if you don't mind. Before we're out of time, I would really appreciate it. And if you need more MPQ on YouTube, hit up MPQ Mastery. He's great. Thanks again for watching, guys. See you in more action in our next video, which should be tomorrow on Legendary Draws for Professor X, the brand new five-star. Have a good one. See ya.